Imagine you are piloting an airliner. The weather is good and you enjoy the scenic view ahead of you while you have an interesting conversation with your colleague. Suddenly, a jet fighter appears next to you. Whoa. Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an airline captain and instructor. In this video, I will talk about what pilots and air traffic controllers can do when they lose communication. And yes, this might include jet fighters. The primary purpose of air traffic control, ATC, is to prevent collisions and organize and expedite the flow of air traffic and provide information and other support for pilots. And we pilots, we are in contact with air traffic control from the moment we start moving until we put on the parking brake. Clear for vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Except for those in the control tower who can see the aircraft with their eyes, the controllers rely on radar to see the traffic. The aircraft are equipped with transponders, which I'll come back to soon. But the important thing is they send a clear identification of the aircraft to the radar. This signal is processed by a computer and displayed on the controller's radar screen. In areas without the radar, the controllers rely on frequent position reports from the pilots. Therefore, radar communication is essential for our safety. Airliners are required to carry two independent VHF radios. The range of a VHF radio depends on the line of sight, so the higher you go, the further the radio can reach. Therefore, when we are flying over remote areas like oceans or deserts, the airliners will carry one or more HF radio as well. The signals from a HF radio can reach beyond the horizon because the signals are deflected by the ionosphere. The range depends on the atmospheric conditions and typically an HF radio has longer range at night. In addition to aircraft carry transponders, that's a true black box that when receiving a signal from the ground radar transmits a signal with a four digit code which is assigned to the aircraft before it takes off. This allows for the radar operator to identify the aircraft and see it clearly on the radar screen. The code is called mode alpha. And when they give us the code, they say squawk, so and so. The transponder also transmits the altitude of the aircraft, and that is called Mount Charlie. And finally, most transponders are Mount Sierra, which transmits flight data like heading, indicated airspeed, and more. Even if we have at least two radios on board, we might lose contact with air traffic control. It can be an electrical failure, taking the radios out, or a failure to the radio themselves, or the headset, or the audio panel. And we might lose the ability to transmit, or we lose the ability to receive messages, or we can lose it altogether. When this happens, we apply the following procedure. 1. When we understand that we cannot communicate with air traffic control, we set the transponder to code 7600. This will trigger an alert at the radar station at the air traffic controller. And the controller will try to contact us on the current frequency and the emergency frequency 121.5. And two, the air traffic controller will also send a message like aircraft in the vicinity of this and this position, squawking 7600. If you read me, squawk 7601. And if you can hear him, you adjust the squawk code to 7601. And the controller will then continue sending you messages where you respond by changing the code to 7602, 7603, etc. As instructed by the controller. And the controller will suggest the airports ahead of you, let you decide where you want to land. And finally, they will clear you to land. 3. When we suspect that we can transmit but not receive messages, 
we send what we call blind transmissions. And they can sound like this. First we address the controller, then we give her identity and then we say transmitting blind due to radio failure. Then we tell our position or, and our intention and estimated time on arrival, ETA, at a certain waypoint. Okay, if the aircraft doesn't respond to calls from the controller and it doesn't hear anything from us, the controller assumes that we will follow the procedures for communication failure. And I will show you the general rules as outlined in ICAO Annex 2. And I will explain the most important parts of that rule. If you fly in visual meteorological conditions, VMC, the rule is to continue VMC and land at the nearest suitable airport. Then you will report to ATC. When you get close to the airport, you will normally start to circle on downwind in front of the control tower. When the controller observes the aircraft, he will try to call you. If he doesn't receive any answer, he will use uh, light signals. They use a light gun, as you see here. A steady red means hold your position. So when you're airborne, you continue circle. And if you are on the ground, you stop your aircraft. Flashing red means you have to stay clear of the runway. And if you're airborne, they tell you you cannot land here. And if you're on the ground and taxi, they tell you don't enter the runway. A flashing green means you can proceed to the runway, but not use it yet. To get the clearance to land, you need a steady green light. A flashing white light means that you can continue and land and park the aircraft at the parking area. And if you're on the ground, you taxi back to the place you started taxiing. Another signal you might see is a flashing red and green. That means you must proceed with extreme caution, whatever reason. And finally, the tower might fire a red pyrotechnic uh, signal, which means you cannot land for the moment. Maybe you forget to extend your landing gear. The pilot will acknowledge to those signals by rocking the wings, like this, or if it's night, to switch the landing lights on or off two times, or the navigation lights. And before you start to write in the comment sections, you can use your mobile phone. Yes, that's absolutely possible when you fly low and slow. But at higher altitudes, that doesn't work. When you are flying in accordance with the instrument flight rules, IFR, you can either follow the rule I just mentioned, which means you are in VMC, but uh, you can also just continue on your flight plan, and that is what bigger and faster aircraft will do, like the airliners. When you are in instrument meteorological conditions, IMC, you should of course be on an IFR flight plan. And the main rule is, follow your plan. But there are some um, more details to be followed. In areas where radar is not used for traffic control, you shall maintain your assigned speed and level altitude or minimum flight altitude if that is higher for 20 minutes after failing to report at a compulsory reporting point. Then you can adjust your speed and level according to your flight plan. In areas where they use radar for traffic control, the rule is exactly as above. The only difference is now it's seven minutes after reaching your last assigned level or minimum flight altitude or after you set your transponder to code 7600 or after failing to report at a compulsory reporting point. If you are on radar vectors and they give a heading so and so or you are deviating around maybe a thunderstorm then you are required to return to your flight path before them next significant waypoint. When all this is done, you proceed in accordance with your current flight plan to a fixed serving the destination airport. 
This can be in a VOR at the airport or a waypoint specified for that airport. If you arrive this fix before your ETA, you must enter the published holding pattern at that fix. And here's something very important. You cannot descend until you reach ETA. So that means you continue at the cruise level to that waypoint. If you're early, you enter the hold. And at ETA, you can start to descend and uh, proceed on the approach. And now you will have 30 minutes to do the approach and land. And remember, this procedure is what air traffic controllers expect you to do. And based on that assumption, they will keep the airspace around you clear for all the traffic. So, okay, that's the general rules as given by a cow. Then the member states can add their own local rules for specific airports. And this information is published in the AIP, Aeronautical Information Publication. And the Airways Manual will also give the same information. Um, for example, this is an arrival chart for Bangkok Siwanopum Airport. And this box shows the communication failure procedure. So regardless of what kind of aircraft you're flying, VFR or IFR, you must remember your rules. They are very important. But what happens if the pilot fails to respond to calls from air traffic control? You, you have your transponder on, they call you, but you don't answer. It can be as simple as the pilots forgot to change their frequency and they get out of reach of the previous one. I am from Norway and in my country there is an anecdotal story about a private pilot who was on a flight from Trondheim airport to a destination in the south of Norway. And you have to cross over an area with mountains and that day there were a cloud layer over the mountains so he decided he would go on top over because he knew there were good weather at the destination. Nothing wrong about that, he called that VFR on top. But this happened a long time before uh, we had GPS in our aircraft. So as he climbed, he encountered a very strong westerly wind, which he was not aware of. So he just continued on his heading on his compass to the south. And he must got a very big shock when he suddenly see on his side a Swedish Air Force Wigan fighter coming up. Hello. Many countries, they have fighter jets on uh, standby, ready to react when aircraft enter the airspace without clearance. This is called quick reaction alert. And this is a game between the uh, Russian and the uh, Western uh, Air Forces. When the Russians fly down the coast outside Norway and further down Europe, Iceland, into the Atlantic Ocean. They will test the reaction time of the first the Norwegian Air Force, then the British Air Force. So this is a little game they play, but if there is an airliner coming into an airspace without making the proper call, they don't any longer have the clearance to enter the airspace, two fighters should be sent up. And they will uh, come up intercept the aircraft and on the way they may break the sun barrier because Elan is cruise at max 0.75 to or higher. So the fighters need to go very fast to catch up. And they may break the sun barrier and that will create load bangs on the ground. So people may get a bit disturbed and wonder what's going on. Anyway, they will come, one aircraft will uh, fly up on the left side of the airliner and just so the pilots can see him and the other will be stand by further behind just in case something happens. And they will try to call you on the frequency 121.5 one one and I'm pretty sure the pilots wake up from whatever they were doing or dreaming about and jump on the radio and say hello hello we are okay. And then everything is good and the aircraft can just turn away and say, have a happy flight. But 
if the pilots cannot establish communication with each other, then the fighter pilot will use his aircraft to make signals. So the first thing he will do, he will check, are you okay? He will rock his wings and switch on and off the navigation lights. And this means you have been intercepted, follow me. And what you shall do as a pilot, you repeat, you rock your wings gently, after all you may have passengers on board, and you flash your navigation lights. And that means, understood, I will comply. You don't discuss with a fighter jet, do you? And if you cannot comply with that, you will switch off and on all the lights on your aircraft in a regular way. So on, off, on, off. If you are in an emergency, you will switch on and off the lights in an irregular way. So maybe on, off, on, off, on, off, like that. That means I have an emergency situation. Um, if, the, if the fighter is directed to lead you to an airport, they will just fly ahead with gentle turns and you follow after them. And then they will lower the landing gear, means land here. And you will do the same, put on the landing gear down and landing lights on. That means you will follow his order. But if you consider it's not safe to land at that airport, you will raise the landing gear up and fly over the runway while you're flashing the landing lights. Okay, that's the general rules for interception on aircraft. And as I said, in most cases, the parents of the fighter on your side will wake you up and you will re-establish your communication. And then the fighter will just turn away, zoom, and disappear. And search intercepts are very rare, but when they happen, not only the people on the ground may get concerned, but also the passengers, they suddenly see a fighter jet on the side, and they may uh, wonder what's, what's really going on here. And thankfully, it's not dangerous. This is a safety measure, and the fighters are just there to make sure everything is okay with you. And this has been, and this is even more important after 9-11. Okay, so what about me? Have I experienced uh, communication failure? Yes, but only once. And this happened in my early career. I was flying a small aircraft and I was based in the south of Norway and I had a flight to, I think it was to Denmark. And uh, when I come back, I landed, parked in front of the terminal building, walk in through the customs just to make sure that if they were waiting for me, they will ask to have an inspection of the aircraft, for example, on my bags. In this case, there was nobody there, so I walked back to the aircraft and called the tower, ready to taxi back to the hangar. The radio was dead. So that was fortunate for me that it happened after I landed, and all I needed to do was to make a phone call to the tower and say, OK, my radio failed, I want to taxi to the hangar. And they say, that's OK. And that's it. OK, that's all for this time. I hope this clarifies any question you might have about uh, communication failure. And please support my channel by sharing with your friends, spread the word and all that. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.